Okay, what's up, George? This is T. Now, this is just some basic standard things I'm gonna be running by you. Okay, so as you see, I just cut the camera on. The uh, ISO is at 400. The um, the aperture is at um, four point. No, actually, the aperture is at 80. And the um, f-stop is at 4.0. So I'm gonna make some adjustments right now. First thing I'm gonna do is turn my ISO down to 100. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want the image to be as crispy as humanly possible. Now I'm going to start sharpening the focus. And this is, you know, all basic information, but this is where we get kind of get into detail with a few things. So my thing is sharp focus and things like that. Now, you'll notice this, this type of camera right here, this 1.4, this is supposed to be, um, you know, have really good bokeh. But as you see, if we, here, I'm gonna hit this focus button and I'm gonna actually it's not allowing me to do it because it's in record mode. Now there's something I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna change the um what is this the aperture? I'm turning the aperture when you turn the aperture up, I'm turning it up to 50, and you'll notice that it's getting brighter. Well, also, also what I'm gonna do is um I'm gonna change the uh the AV. Now the lower you get. shutter speed that happens I really don't know the terminology the way I should but anyway um, that for me to get these things back darker I need to um, turn up my what is this my shutter speed I'm turning up my shutter speed so as I turn my shutter speed up it's like at 400 right now now I'm gonna hit my um, my um, button my exposure button to see where I'm at now when I hit my exposure button it's a little over one now, you kind of got to play around with your own eye. I kind of um, use the monitor to judge where I want it to be. But if you want to be 100% flawless, you're going to adjust the shutter speed until the exposure is going to be perfect. Me, personally, I don't do that sometimes. Because sometimes it be a little darker, but that's just me. That's just me. So what I would do if I was you, I would play around with both settings. I would set it till it's a perfect um, exposure and you know adjust it accordingly and um, and go from there now sometime like like I want it a little brighter so I can do some color correcting later so I turn the shutter speed down to like 640 and now now the only thing about shutter speed is now when you when you when you don't when you're moving it's going to stutter all right it's going to stutter ta 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 um, traditionally the shutter speed should be actually here at 50. The shutter speed should be at 50. But the problem is when I turn my shutter speed to 50, you know, I run into other problems like too much brightness. Now I can turn my um, my f-stop up to like, uh, you know, 10, things like that. But now here's a problem when you when you turn it, um, ap um, what is it? When you turn the aperture up, I mean the f-stop up, you lose that bokeh. And the bokeh is the blurriness in the background. You see what I'm saying? You, it, for you to keep that blurriness in the background, you should have it at the lowest possible. And in this case, 1.4. So I'll go back, I'm sorry, I'll go back down, I'll hold my AV and I'll go back down to 1.4 so I can have my um, bokeh. But again, it got too light. Now I can't go no lower on the ISO, that's the highest quality, right? So what I have to do now is turn up my shutter speed. So in this case, because it's so bright out here, actually the sun is beaming directly down on the image. So I have to turn it up even higher to bring it to normal exposure. Right now, it's I, I'm at 2,000 for shutter speed, but you see the uh, my exposure is uh, two points over one. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm bringing it up. Now, I, brought, I done brought my shutter speed up to 4,000 and it's still not a perfect exposure according to my camera. So now what I'm gonna do, but see, I like the bouquet. Now, if you'll notice, you see me focusing in on that? Okay, so so obviously you, you understand that the higher the shutter speed, the um, the higher the shutter speed, the, be the better the bouquet. So a lot of times to compensate for that, uh, for that, uh, that, Mm, that lighting to compensate for it you're supposed to put a filter over your lens 
uh, and it's, it stops, okay? But you know, I'm kind of getting a little bit into, you know, crazy detail. We're, I, I'll discuss that with you later on. But anyway, I'm kind of just toying around explaining to you the settings. So for you to get that, um, for you to get that, uh, that, that, that blurriness or whatever, you want to, especially like, I'm, I'm thinking being, you being in Puerto Rico, it's going to be a lot of sun out there, probably not a lot of shade, you know what I'm saying? So you might going to want to turn up your shutter speed a little high and you're going to want to turn your aperture a little low. Uh, I mean, your uh, f-stop low so that you can get that bouquet. Now, not all the time, but this is just for that film look, all right? This is just for that film look. So if we sit here and I hold the, the AV and I, um, you know, start turning it down, we get a little darker, which will allow me to either do one or the other thing. Either turn my shutter speed down now, which again, we'll lose the bouquet, or I can go to my ISO. Okay, so I can turn my ISO. I turn my ISO up to 400, and you see, you see what's what's going on here. I'm kind of messing around with different settings, but it all depends on what you're trying to get. It depends on the look you're trying to get, and always check your exposure. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I can kind of tell you right now. Um, when I get home, I'm not at home right now. I'm out in the field just shooting different things. Um, ouch when I get home I'll try to explain to you a little bit better try to give you a quick overview of uh, how you should have your camera settings so that uh, all your images will be nice sharp and crispy and colorful you know of course after color grading you know what I'm saying um, and I'll get a little bit more into detail but anyway again try to have your ISO low as possible so I, in this case mine is at a hundred and um, my uh my shutter speed okay so i'm in a different location right now i'm always checking my exposure which is the little star you know you hit the little star and then they give you an exposure setting so i'm always hitting my exposure then i'm adjusting my shutter speed to make the exp exposure perfect and again the higher the shutter speed you lose that film look you get the as far as motion i'll explain all that to you um later on in the tutorial when I get home. But anyway, I just wanted to come out and field and shoot a few things, you know what I'm saying? And the other thing I wanna run by you real quick is um, the type of things that you should shoot. The type of things that you should shoot while you uh, in Puerto Rico is the type of things that make Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. And try to, if you can, and if people would allow you, try to get more people than necessarily monuments. Definitely get your monuments, but but keep people because the people of, of Puerto Rico is what makes Puerto Rico Puerto Rico. So think in terms of you know people maybe uh, selling food, um, people maybe uh, playing music, people maybe um, you know the kids maybe uh, playing a certain game. You know just just think people, and um, that's going to. Um, that's going to explain to the audience not only where you've been, but also their culture. You want to capture the culture, and, and capturing the culture is capturing the people. What they wear is very colorful down there, you know. People are like, they like to wear colors. Try to find some older people that's into the tradition and the true culture of Puerto Rico. Not necessarily the young ones that's, you know, so surrounded with hip hop, this, that, and the other, but the older people that actually represents the culture, that's something more appealing to us. And, and, and also, Keep in mind, try to get your wife and try to get her experience. You know, this is what my wife is experiencing while she's down here. So get close-ups of her and, and get things that she's doing. And if she's looking out the window at the, you know, get her looking out the window and, 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 and get what she's looking at and get her collaborating with some of the people. And if, you know, if, if, if it's a band, or I'm just saying, I don't know if it, but if it's a band playing, you know, uh, shoot close-ups of the band and the, and the looks on their face and the wrinkles in their eyes and they get close-ups of your, of your wife and the smiles and the things that what, what are all her giddiness what she's experiencing from uh, being down there and those are the quick notes that I can run by you uh, that, that's pretty much a general idea what you should do but I'll talk more about you you know over the phone text you and call you and and kind of go over a few things but anyway that's what I got for you right now so I'm gonna end the session and uh, I'm gonna pick up uh, where I left off at home bye bye 
Okay, George, check this out. This is the videos that I want you to check out. Um, it's going to be this one, how to adjust aperture settings on Canon T2. I forget what camera you told me you had. I don't know if it was a T2i or T3i. Um, but anyway, I apologize real quickly for that um, calling the shutter speed, aperture speed, and I always get those two mixed up. But anyway, you want to concentrate on your ISO being at 100, and you want to adjust your shutter speed. You might want to turn it up if it's a lot of sunlight out. And your uh, f-stop, you want to turn that as low as possible to get bokeh. Um, you know, 1.4, whatever, low as possible, so that you can get bokeh, which is blurry, blurred background. Uh, if you want everything in sharp image, then you just turn your uh, aperture up or your f-stop up. So if, if you got a lens that's a 1.4 or 1.8 or 2.8, then you know you might want to turn it up to you know a five point something six seven ten eleven you know the higher you turn it up the more you put everything that you look at in focus anyway that real quick um you might want to check your manual to find out how to do those particular things i want you to check out this video which i'm gonna actually send you the link i'm gonna email you the excuse me i'm gonna email you that link and um the, these this is the other video that I wanted to actually show you um, I forget what it's called maybe I need to sign in let's see I'm gonna sign in and this video actually I'll check out some of this inspirational stuff is by these guys here J photography so I'll just go to the site and um, what I want you to look at, I want you to check out this video here. And this video right here, this shot with a cannon, and um, this to me is real inspirational. And when I was talking to you about getting certain shots, this video in particular have a lot of uh, the native type of you know uh, shots that I had in mind you know some out of town shots things like that um, I'm gonna probably try to fast forward to specific uh, scenes but um, I want you to check that out when you can look at it look at the footage look how they use bokeh like for example right here you see they got the background blurry they got him real sharp kind of pay attention to that type of stuff um, you see even right here, his face is blurry, but all of this is sharp. That's blurry, but this here is sharp. So um, this 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 is probably an 85 millimeter or a 50 millimeter up close. All right. Um, let me see. You can sometimes look at what the settings that they have for certain things. His ISO at 200. Uh, he using RAW, so he probably just taking a picture. His uh, f-stop is at 4.5, and his um. His uh, shutter speed is at 640. But anyway, you can kind of just get little ideas. But th that's really the secret. I really learn from the masters that I already know. The, the people that create Canon, you know, they know exactly what to do. And I just copy exactly uh, what they already do. Now, see, these, these type of shots, this is what I want you to kind of pay attention to. These are the type of shots you kind of want. Um... Always pay attention to composition, framing. You know, like you'll notice that he's slightly on the left-hand side as opposed to dead center. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, you notice he's facing this way. I don't know. Me, personally, I would have had him a little behind, but that's probably had, how they had to set the camera on the on the wheel. But anyway, um, this this is a really good shot. And, and I can see you, you know, far back, and this can be your wife, and it can be little kids. I don't know what the song is about. I haven't heard it yet, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm kind of just kind of just throwing it out there. Like, these, ty these type of shots can pretty much go with any song, especially when you're shooting, in particular, quote-unquote, a vacation. You see, vacation scenes should kind of, you know, everything treated as you're taking photographs, but instead it's video. Always, you know, treat it as a photograph, but instead it's video. But that's a really good shot. That's an excellent shot, you know, with that sharp focus. Oh, excuse me, I'm real tired. Well, and that's in the background, that's blurry. And then there's, there's some other shots in here that I was interested in. Let me see if we can just move up to that. Okay, we go back here, right here. Um, this here. 
I'm sorry. This here. See, this, this here, and, and this is what I'm thinking when I think vacation. See, this is the your unique thing that uh, describes where you where you are. You know what I mean? And and then that's interesting. It's it's interesting to see different cultures. So you have to you have to capture certain things that represent that to the full. And I I know you understand what I'm talking about, but you know I'm kind of just reemphasizing it. You know because I don't wouldn't want you to miss really good footage while you're down there. Kids is always uh, 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 um, money shots. Older people is always money shots. Cultural things is always the money shots. See this right here? This is good. This is real good. You know, the colors that she, you know, the, the whole look, that whole thing, that, that's really good. It's unique. It's fresh. It's different. You know, and I can see... Uh, you know, I can see that being you and, you know, you kind of just documenting your wife. It don't necessarily have to be exactly this, but, you know, I kind of like to look at things that's already composed really well. And then I just kind of piggyback off of that. You know, I don't I don't try to go my own direction. Not until I really get the hang of what's really going on or if I can't get exactly um, what I want, then I kind of start, you know, imitating the greats. And let me see if I can move a little forward. Oh, right here. When I okay, you see, see, this is what I like. Uh, the older people they represent the culture. They they represent the culture. And you see how he kind of just cutting them in. You know, they don't necessarily have nothing to do with the video, but you still understand. Okay, he's in the foreign location and he's documenting. You know, the culture of things. You know, I know I, know I keep emphasizing on, but you know, it just helps you to really see how you should document these things. You see what I'm saying? And you see how he focusing on the kids. Now, that would be your wife. See, this would be your wife. And she's collaborating with the people of the land, you know. And she having fun with him. Not necessarily her holding the camera. But, you know, just say it would be her without her holding the camera. But you'll still grab these images and you'll grab her just minus the camera. See, these are nice shots, nice composition. You know, the older people represents the land, the culture. And I'm not, uh, I'm not going through this for training purposes. I'm kind of just going over this for composition purposes. So this is supposed to be a training video teaching you what this 60D is able to do. Now these, this right here, like you see how they, he just taking photos of the texture. This is fabric. Fabric have a lot of value in foreign, certain, cer certain lands. You know, um, you know, in Puerto Rico, it could be something in particular that's special to them. And you want to document that, you know what I'm saying? Um, it could be something in Mexico, certain threads. In Africa, for example, you got the threads, you know, you got the um, dashikis and things like that, if I'm wording it right. I don't even know if I'm wording it right. But that, you know, that shows um, the culture. It's all part of the culture. You see what I'm saying? See? So anyway, uh, I'm not going to hold you up too long on this one. But anyway, you can check this out. Oh, here, here's, here's another thing. This is a good one here. I like this one. And this is a shot that you can easily get using your 50 millimeter 1.4. This is probably a 50 1.4. Um, and the ISO look like it might be at 100 to 200. Look like it's a lot of bright light shining up. All of this dark shadow and thing like this, you're not going to get that when you actually redo the recording. This comes in after color correction. So keep that in mind. You can't set your camera to make it look like this. This all comes from color correcting using curves and things like that. But as long as, for the most part, um, you get a scene like this and you got the light shining on her face and, you know, it's not harsh light, you know, you'll notice that it's soft lighting. But, you know, she got a lot of texture on her face, so it looks good. And then she got depth of feel. All of that back, back there is blurry and all of that there is black. So all of that plays a, a really good role, you know what I'm saying, and, and, what, you, and what you're grabbing. Um, go to other things. Let's see. See, he kind of in the dark, but he kind of playing with light, natural light. 
and you basically that's what you're going to be doing you're going to be kind of messing around with natural light i know this is natural light because if he was in a production lab or per se he will have something bouncing this light that's coming from this way this is soft light so that have to be the sun that's probably softened up with a sheet or maybe a clouds or, or just just you know ambience that's just making it softer but he would probably have a white board that would bounce the light that's coming from this way to bounce on that board so that he can illuminate this side a little bit. But anyway, um, I'll get more into detail about that type of stuff. But for the most part, you should be able to get the, you know, good enough images and we can create these type of looks. But these are the type of looks that you want. You see what I'm saying? These are the type of looks you want. Close-ups, background shots, things like that. Everything ain't going to always be blurry in the background, but you get the idea. You get the idea. So this is a good one to look at when you kind of want to get some general ideas or what can I shoot for a vacation video. Now, there's another one that I really, really, really admire. Um, and I don't know if I got that saved. I think it's called, it's under my inspiration videos. But let me see. Let me see. Playlists. But I'll send you the links anyway. Uh, this one in particular is really good. I may have lost it, but I will find it and send it to you. Um, this is a really good video. Really good professional produced video by a guy that I'm familiar with. And um, this guy used a T2i. This is a T2i. And he used the Tonica lens that you got. And he used a 50 millimeter 1.4. Now this is probably this first scene is probably the Tonica. I try to what I try to do is learn. Um, I try to be. I try to like to call out what lens they might be using, so I can kind of get familiar with the type of lenses you sh you should use for a specific look and composition, and you should get yourself familiar with that too. Now, just off the bat, it's looking like to me. I know that the Tonica. Or Tokina is a wide angle so I would say that okay I would say this one here is either 85 millimeter 1.8 or 50 millimeter 1.4 why because of the narrow depth of field he probably got the shutter speed all I mean um the um he probably got the f-stop all the way up to 1.4 and he probably got enough light so that he can turn his shutter speed um you know down or whatever I know he got the ISO at 100 because everything is nice and crispy you see what I'm saying and uh, this shot right here uh, to me, it's clearly a Tokina or a Tonica. I don't know the name, but it's clear because it's wide. It's wide, and everything is in focus. Everything is in focus. See, so I'm 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 sure he's using that. And um, this one right here, he switched to a either a, he probably switched to a 50, which in your case would be the 30 or the or the 50, depending on the distance you are, because you can get the same looks uh, with the 30 or the 50. It just depends on the distance. Uh, I think the Canon 50 got a little bit more of a crispier uh, look to it um, as far as, you know, glass, you know, the type of quality glass it is. But I'm not really sure, 100% for sure. This is back to the to Tokina. This is probably the 50. This is probably the 50 right here. Uh, this is uh, probably the 50 or probably a 28 because it's wide. So it's probably a 28 1.8. I got a 28 Sigma. I got a 28 millimeter Sigma 1.8. So this is probably a 1.8. Uh, this is probably a 50. Um, this is the Tonica, or the Tokina. And uh, this is probably a 50. And uh, this is probably Tokina. But I don't know. I got this blurry right here. But everything but behind is in focus. So he probably just set, set his settings, uh, you know, a little different. And I also, I want you to keep this in mind, too. All of the colors and everything that's popping and looking nice and rigid and crispy, all that comes from color correction. This guy is an excellent color corrector. And when I realized that your videos stand apart when you are good with color correcting, I made it my vow to be great at color correcting i'm already an artist i already do graphics so once i understood well why do you know i'm shooting with a t2i why my stuff ain't looking like theirs well once i understood oh color correction that's why they color looks more natural and mine look faded or mine look too vivid or mine look under vivid it's all because i'll do the color correction anyway i'm gonna send this link to you so you can check that out 
Um, you can get some ideas, you know, for the look and things like that. Uh, this this composition I wasn't really too impressed with, but you know, to each his own. And there's another one, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna send you the links. Uh, I'm gonna attach this to the video that you just got through watching. Um, um, you know, the video that I shot outside, giving you some information about how to set your settings. Then I'm going to send you four different videos that I want you to check out. And that'll kind of, you know, that'll warm you up to what's going on. And it's kind of like a fast track so that you can, you know, get the best images that you possibly can where you at. Okay, I hope this all, I hope all this stuff can help you out. Meanwhile, while you're down there, if you have any questions... Just text me. I'm going to be tied up for the next couple of days, but text me anyway, and I'll get, to, uh, get back to you as soon as possible. If you got any questions or anything like that, they're like, T, uh, I'm down here, and I got this, and I'm, I'm trying to do this, but I'm not getting this particular look. What, what should I do? What you suggest I do? Then I'll hit you back. You know what I'm saying? All right. I hope this stuff can help you out, and I'll be talking to you soon. And good luck, and enjoy yourself down in Puerto Rico.